you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. Thechrisvossshow.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by. Thank you so much for being with us. Have we ever told you guys as an audience how much we love you? In four days, we clock over to 15 years, and uh, we're on our way. We're about to break the 1,500 episode mark, so we'll be saying 1,600 soon. But we just want you to know that we love you. And we love you so much, we in, uh, encourage you to go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, uh, and uh, what is it, uh, TikTok at Chris Voss One. And uh, also give us five star reviews over there. And we'll love you just a little bit more, but you know, we love you so much as an audience, it, we can't even be more complete. Remember, the Chris Voss show is the family that loves you but doesn't judge you so you're a part of that show we had an amazing gentleman on the show and we're talking to him about one of my favorite subjects or several of my sub favorite subjects businesses running them how to do them etc cetera, etc cetera. we're going to talk about leadership uh what challenge companies face how to build better teams how to encourage staff to do more etc cetera, etc cetera, listen all that sort of good stuff we're going to get some of the deets as the kids say, do the kids say the deets? They don't. I don't even know what the kids say anymore. I'm old, man. Uh, so we have an amazing gentleman on the show. He's joining us. Uh, Ron Reich is on the show with us today. He's the founder of RLB Training and Development. He has over 30 years of training and development and consulting experience. His background is broad-based, having worked for major organizations such as Toshiba, the Chubb Corporation, and Organon Pharmaceuticals. Uh, he's there you go. I gave that win a swing. Uh, he's done consulting work in many industries, including medical assisted living facilities, manufacturing, high tech, retail, pharmaceuticals, and banking. The majority of his work through these years has been focused on leadership management development, along with corporate training and organizational development. He's an avid reader and he loves to share his latest thoughts on philosophies about these topics with a group for whom he works. Uh, he's passionate about the work he does and makes the workshops as interactive and fun as possible. His only request is for participants to arrive early, or I'm sorry, I was I, I, I just invented that. I, I don't know what I was thinking in my head. Uh, his only request is for participants to arrive ready, and which, you know, counts as early, too, to participate and have some fun along the way. Welcome to the show, Ron. How are you? Well, I'm fine, Chris. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. And it's wonderful to have you. I'm just going to just make up stuff in your bio, too, as well. So there you go. But usually it's good stuff. So there you go. Uh, give us a, where do you want people to find you on the interwebs to get to know you better? Uh, in order to get to know me better, Chris, probably the best thing to do is to go to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Just very simply, Ron Reich, RLB Training and Development. And uh, I'm also on, uh, uh, oh, God, I'm losing my train of thought. Let's see Facebook, Instagram? Instagram, thank you. There you I'm, go. I'm on Instagram, R RLB under, uh, underscore uh, Leadership Development. There you go. So people can contact you there, get in touch with you, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, give us like a 30,000 overview of what type of consulting and help you do. The, the 30,000 foot view, Chris, very simply is I help leaders and managers do their jobs more effectively through education, training, coaching. And that involves just so many different things. You know, like what you, what you had mentioned before, we get into uh, you know, organizational development re relative to culture development, we get into delegating, we get into emotional intelligence, psychological safety, feedback, listening, just, you know, anything to do with ma leadership, management, and uh, organizational effectiveness. There you go. And why do companies need to be more effective and better at what they do? Is that like an important thing? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think a, a lot of times... It's, it's just been my experience over and over and over is that the leaders in organizations will send people to training. Is mm -hmm. You need the training. 
And, you know, the individuals, you know, I'll work with them and say, Ron, great. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. The people upstairs are the ones who need this as well. <laughs> and that has just been my experience. Actually, they so need it more times. probably, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen, I, I've, I think I've worked with some corporations like that. Like, I'm like, maybe we should get the CEO in here because uh, yeah. this is actually for him. Uh, but that's you, mostly what my employees tell me. They're like, I think you need the training, Chris. And I'm like, I'm potty trained. I don't see what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, uh, so uh, what are some major things that you when you work with companies and, and, and people right now, what's one of the top things that you're seeing that people are really challenged by? I think I think that one one of the biggest challenges is that a lot of leaders today don't realize or, or they, they they focus too much on results and they forget that you know what you're dealing with human beings. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, it, it, it's it's fun because one of the first activities I like to do in in a session is very simply break people into small groups, throw some flip charts up on the wall. What's your role as a leader? Again, you know, 30,000 foot view, just write down what are your major responsibilities here? And the debrief always comes out. Take a look, folks, how much technical information is on that flip chart. Mm -hmm. Or realize not very much at all. That's right. So what's your role? To be human. That's what your role is. And I think a lot of times people lose sight of that. It's like, we need results. We need these numbers. And if we don't get this done, and it's like, yeah, okay, the results are important, except your job is to get the results through the people with whom you work. There you go. So maybe you should treat the humans better. It's kind of like that analogy of like uh, putting a gun to someone's head. And if uh, and if, and if, if things don't improve around here, uh, no one gets hurt. Right. right? <laughs> You're like that's that's, a, that's right. a hell of a motivation there, and then uh, if that doesn't work, then they just go, "Hey, we have pizza, pizza lunch." That's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the ping pong table is free. Let's go, guys! It's like, oh wow, okay. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, I, I just want to work away there on the on the hamster <laughs> wheel for that. Um, so yeah, that's it, it's interesting. Uh, do you find that a lot of leaders, because you you talk about leaders, ship leaders and ship leaders that own ships, basically. Um, what are, what are some of the biggest challenges that they're facing and do they need to be more self-reflective and, and realize that maybe they need some more training as opposed to the rest of us? You know, Chris, for me, well, you know, all, all kidding aside, whatever is that I think you just hit on one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things is that for anybody, regardless of role, particularly the top level people and the managers, if you want to be effective, one of the most important things to do, get to know yourself extraordinarily well. Mm-hmm. The better you know yourself, then the more effectively you will work with other people. There you go. And I, I believe that with every fiber I have. I, I try to get to know myself better, but I have about uh, 10 different personalities, according to my psychologist. <laughs> so uh, we're still discovering the other ones, and uh, that's still a work in progress, as we all know. Uh, <laughs> it was six prior shows, so I just make up a number every time. <laughs> uh, it's a great callback joke for sh- multiple shows. Um, you know, leaders, leaders today have a lot of challenges. Are you seeing challenges with the remote work population? I know uh, job uh hires availability for job hires are stressed so people need to kind of start treating their people better because it's getting harder to hire people and and from what i understand and seeing in the tea leaves it's not going to get easier yeah yeah no I, I, i absolutely and i think i think that is one of the challenges and i think both sides you know the 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 leaders the managers along with for lack of a better term here their their colleagues Everybody needs to be flexible, you know, relative to absolutely. You want to work from home two or three days a week. I'm good with that. That's fine. We also need you in the office because there is no replacement. And I also believe this with every fiber I have, there is no replacement for the face-to-face contact for the, you know, the, the, the getting a cup of coffee together. They're the just passing in the hallway. There's no replacing that. None. 
That's true, especially when you you want to team up together. I mean, sometimes just being in a boardroom together with people is is much better than you know trying to talk over Zoom and you got kids running and screaming and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we and just... I mean, so you know, so so much of it is too the 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 banter that takes place before the meeting, and and whether that is pre, you know a professional conversation, just a, a personal conversation. Looking, looking somebody in the eye, seeing somebody's body language, noting exactly, you know, and, and just seeing the whole person is just more effective from my perspective. And I, I totally agree with you. In fact, you give me a little bit of epiphany here. Um, you know, we've had, we've had people that uh, are brain people on the show that talk about how, uh, and the word escapes me starts with an M, but basically there's, there's certain signals that we give to each other when we work with each other. And two-dimensional screens don't really work. When we handshake, uh, when we, you know, it's why politicians kiss babies and hug people, you know. There's a, there's a certain touching and, like you mentioned, the body language. We watch each other's body language and how we work. Uh, and, and so having that in real life is very different than having on the screen when you're watching it. And our brains really don't adapt well, according to these scientists, to this two-dimensional sort of format but also in team building there's there's I, I, you know it, we're kind of a tribal sort of people especially men where you know we're used to going out and hunting stuff down and patting on the back hey way to go joe or high five whatever you can safely do according to your hr department these days <laughs> um you know or you can just look at each other for five seconds and go cool job dude and then look away so you know Nothing happens. Um, I'm doing jokes, people, but so I think I am. I don't know. Uh, but uh, so having that for team building and camaraderie and and building that spirit of we're working together. Er, let's go kill the woolly mammoth in business. I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's 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 no doubt. And again, going back to getting to know yourself extremely well, and the research shows very clearly as well. The better you know your colleagues, both personally and professionally, the more effectively you will work with them. Ah, so and, there you and, go. And I mean, Chris, I'll, I'll give you an example. I think, mm -hmm. and I think this is one of the reasons, candidly, uh, that I'm very good at what I do. Mm -hmm. Is that number one, I am always, always in a training room well before we start. People are coming in, and I'm ready to go. My flip charts are up. Everything's there. And the reason I'm saying that is, as you come into the room, I say, good morning. Hi, I'm Ron. And we can start a conversation. And instantly, my goal for that and anybody else who's going to be in the class is to let them know, hey, this guy is human. Mm -hmm. He's a nice guy. Maybe this won't be as bad as I think. You know, you know, given the assumption that maybe they're nervous, whatever it might be, that makes a big difference. Opening activity, I always ask them, name, and this, again, I do a lot of work for uh, the, AM, uh, the American Management Association, AMA, where there are people from different companies. Opening activity, I want your name, I want your, you know, company job location, a passion you have, and a challenge you hope to address. And everybody is sitting there, okay, I can do that. Is oh, wait a minute, there's a, there's a twist to this. Everybody stand up. Let's take the next 20 minutes or so, and I want you to start introducing yourselves to each other using this as your, as your, uh, as your platform, using this just you know, as a uh, platelet, if you will. Oh, really? Okay? I participate, and at the end, I always ask them, how does this opening activity help us? I don't feel alone. I feel like I know the other participants. Wow, we all have similar challenges, and instantly, Chris, we have established the basis for a relationship and that's wow. what it's all about. Wow. And you get to know each other better. You know, that's brilliant, dude. I love that. Um, it, it probably is even more necessary in how disconnected people have, go, have gone with COVID and these zoom exactly. meetings, you know, there's, there's real, yeah. like everyone should do that. And you're, you're like, who are these coworkers? I used to be in an office with three years ago. And, uh, and, and then understanding what people's passions are and their motivations are, are really important too because you know like you mentioned earlier in the show you're just not you're just not a, a cog in the wheel you're just not a you're just not i don't know a body filling a chair you're a human freaking right. being and 
and you deserve uh you deserve free pizza day i don't know i'm just doing a joke there yeah. so they go, you know one of the things we talked about and it's kind of a running joke you see some memes on it every now and then linkedin is companies you know will use this we're a family language um you know we're a big family we love you and and we have a family environment here and everybody's and then you know like one day you're like hey you're kicked out of the family you're fired here's a pink slip and you're like wow man this is a rough family um <laughs> So, you know, what do you think of that? I mean, a lot of people cap on that sort of stuff. I, I am all for uh, you know, ha having a fun, open atmosphere, if you will. Manager, clients have asked me over the years, how close should I get with my colleagues? And my answer always is, I believe very strongly you should be friendly with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I say, be very careful about becoming friends with anybody because that can be, that can be an issue. Mm -hmm. you know, let's go out over the weekend. Let's, you know, let's go to dinner, you know, whatever it might be that can become problematic. I will be friendly with everybody. I care about everybody. You can talk to me about anything. I don't want to be your friend necessarily. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know, yeah, you don't want to be too friendly. Otherwise, HR uh, gives you a call and you have to do one of those trainings, those retrainings or something like that. Um, you talk about uh, how to get people to listen to each other more and how to improve that. And that's probably really important in a business because especially if your boss tells you to do something, you might want to listen to what he told you to do. Um, how, how do you uh, help companies uh, maybe facilitate some of that? Relative to listening is what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I'm very, very fortunate, very blessed that I'm certified to teach seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, oh, wow. Stephen Covey. There you go. Habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And mm -hmm. essentially, that's what that that's that's the listening model that I share with my clients is that you need to listen carefully for the message for the experience that the person is describing to you. In order to be able to do that, Chris, and I say this all the time to people, and actually, actually let's link it back to being face-to-face -face or being in the same room together, because we listen with three different things. We listen with our eyes, we listen, of course, with our ears, mm -hmm. and we listen with our heart. Mm -hmm. Listening with the eyes, body language. Yeah. What's the message you're sending me body language wise? Run, you know, or, you know, Chris, what do you think about launching the product next week? Oh, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> yeah, we're ready. And that's, you know, that's part of listening with your ears. Of course, what is the person saying? How is the person saying it? Then with your heart, what are the emotions involved? And in order to understand the message, Listening again, eyes, ears, heart, translate. That, that's just what I say. Translate what you're hearing the person say. Mm -hmm. Chris, it sounds like you're excited. It sounds like you have, it, it, it feels to me like there are some concerns lurking beneath the surface. Is that right? Mm -hmm. There's and a lot of concerns lurking beneath, lurking beneath my surface. <laughs> it's, it's incredible the, the responses I get from people. In, in fact, sadly, I don't know how many years ago it was. It might, it's, it's over a decade. It's in my notes for one, you know, one of the courses that I facilitate. I always ask, what was it like to have somebody listen to you really carefully? Mm -hmm. Natalie, a participant in a class many years ago, her hand went up real slowly. Ron, it scared me. I was like, scared you? How, how so? She said, Ron, nobody listens to me at work. And to have somebody listen to me like that was just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're actually paying attention and listening to me. It's so How weird. Sad is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 it is sad. And uh, I think it's cool you're you're uh you're you're um uh, certified to train in the Covey thing. We had Cynthia Covey Haller on for the last book of Stephen Covey after his death. It was kind of the yeah. final memoir. So we had her on the show and it was great. She was wonderful. Um, you know, it, it, listening to people, building, building up each other and uh, understanding each other, you know, communication is a great hallmark of business. And if you, if you can't communicate or your teams can't communicate, then I don't know how you're getting anything done. Right. Uh, That's right. 
Well, and, and, and you know, part, part of it too, when, when we talk about communication here, and all these companies say, all of them, oh, well, you know, we, we're honest and we're open and we're transparent. And, you know, 98% of the time, it's just something up on the wall is that, yeah, we want to be honest with each other. Mm -hmm. and, and where I'm going with that comment is part, you know, a big part of success within any organization or within any, any department is psychological safety and people feeling safe relative to, hey, can I ask you questions, boss of mine, colleague of mine? I feel I feel dumb asking you about this again, except I'm not far. I don't understand this process. I don't understand this procedure. Mm -hmm. And people need to feel safe doing that. Additionally, one of the other big things is then in a, then in a, the, the psychological safety is tiered. The next tier is being able to contribute. And then when I when, when I am ready to contribute, the key thing is let me do that. You don't need to watch me. You know, I, I don't need you know, I don't need a mother hen here. You know, I know what I'm doing. I've got 30 years of experience. Mm -hmm. I'm wide open to feedback, and I mean that. I really am. I'm not perfect. I never have been. I never will be. I also don't need somebody watching me every minute. Yeah. And and the, the last thing, and this is really my point, the last part of psychological safety is challenge, is feeling comfortable challenging your boss, challenging a coworker. I don't think this is smart. We're not ready to launch this. This is not a good idea. We haven't done the research yet. You know, whatever it might be, instead of, uh, you know, does anyone have any questions? No, no, boss, of course not. You're the be all end all. Because if I, you know, if I say I have a different opinion, I will get my head torn off. <laughs> That's true. You know, it, it, I like the psychological safety measure you talk about. Uh, I never really identified as that, but that gives me an epiphany to start calling it that. We always, I always, you know, I learned very early on in business that the one person who maybe they didn't quite get everything through training, you know, or they missed some stuff, you know, we all have those moments of training where we're like, eh, you know, and uh, we, we just, our brain tunes out, we're thinking about, I don't know mcdonald's or something and uh does everyone have that mcdonald's anyway um but we tune out and, or chris sauce does too too many segues and then we lose track of what's going on but uh that's another matter uh <laughs> stop it chris so we tune out and they don't learn the stuff and i want the one thing i've learned is that guy in training or maybe they don't understand their job fully and what they've been put under that will be the person that melts down a 20 or thirty thousand dollar machine or cost me twenty, thirty thousand dollars in some sort of snafu. The the person who doesn't understand exactly what's going on, and and so, and so I just get that you can't yell at people and go, why didn't you say something? And so we used to try try and create an environment around our office where I, I would tell people the only dumb question is the unasked question. So if you don't understand some, please ask. And then also creating a safe psychological environment like you talked about where. It's okay to ask me if you didn't understand something or you want to get that feedback. I'm, we're not going to beat you up. We'll beat you up if you screw something up and you didn't ask, but yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, you know, that's so important. And setting that standard of culture where people feel free to go, hey, Chris, I I didn't understand. And you're like, what? And they're like, any of it. And you're like, okay, well, we'll fire you next week, but let's try and retrain you. <laughs> And, and you know what, Chris, part, part, part of this, too, though, is also for any good leader, having the ability to ask good questions mm. and, and not and not along the lines of, Ron, do you understand this? Mm. Ron, are you you know, are you ready for this presentation mm -hmm. rather than that? And I, I, this is one of the reasons I love to read so much, because I, I pulled this out of a book I read a number of years ago called Leadership is Language. Oh. Rather, rather, rather than asking, are you ready? Ron, on a scale of one to 10, how ready are you for this presentation? Boss, I think it's an eight. Okay, hmm. great. What's preventing it from being a 10? How can I help you? Instead of, are you ready? Yes, boss, I'm ready to go when maybe I'm not. And I mean, it's, it's, it's these little subtle things that make such a difference. And again, it's not like, and, you know, let's let's go back to tone of voice. 
Well, mm. I think it's an, I think I'm, I'm probably at an eight right now. How come it's not a ten? Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be answering you real comfortably. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure about you know the slides yet, or you know whatever it might be. So mm. I mean, all of these things tie together. Yeah, it's more important to be prepared than not. I mean, you know. I mean, if you, you don't want to, I mean, yelling at people, demo, de devaluing them, demoralize them, exactly. you, you know, isn't, isn't going to do better and helping people. You know, I think that comes into, you know, you mentioned, you know, how can I serve you? I think, or you something of that implication. And, and, uh, you know, we talk a lot about servant leadership. A lot of people, they really don't get that being a leader is, is servant leadership. You're not just sitting up there as a King, you know, barking orders at everyone. Right. Except in my office, I think that's how my office works. But <laughs> that's just me, which is probably why they're they have torches and pitchforks outside the door, and they have a guillotine they've set up. But I've locked myself in my office. Anyway, uh, moving on for the so let's talk about servant leadership. How important is that, and uh, why is it important to take things from that perspective in leadership? I I, I am a believer in servant leadership, mm -hmm. and I think I think sometimes people misinterpret that. I read something about this the other day. There's, a, there's another term out there, and I am not going to remember it. I know I'm not. And people were countering the, the term servant leadership. Mm -hmm. As a leader, absolutely, positively, I am here to serve you. Mm -hmm. I am here to help you. In addition, I'm also here, and I am being paid by the organization to produce results. So mm -hmm. we do need to produce results. This is not just... How can I be nice to you? How can I make you feel good? And part of that comes from, I'm going to help you to grow. I'm going to help you to develop. I'm going to coach you. Eventually, absolutely, I'm just going to delegate to you and I'm going to let you run on your own. I'm going to give you regular feedback. I will, you know, I'll give you recognition when you need it. I'm also going to give you developmental feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, is that because I'm not just here to serve you. And I think a lot of people misinterpret that. There you go. There you go. I and, mean, and, and Chris, you know, if you don't mind, I, I do want to add please do. to that. No, because we've, we've been talking about how important relationships are and we need to be human. Part of having a good relationship is feeling, is, is both parties feeling safe with each other mm -hmm. and that we can indeed have difficult conversations with each other without damaging the relationship. There you go. Yeah. Otherwise, you get a damaged relationship and everyone resents everyone and it just gets exactly. ugly from there and exactly. then nothing gets done and people sabotage and stuff. So, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, you know, servant leaders, it, it, leadership is interesting to me because, like I said, some people think of paradigm, you know, and they go full uh, narcissistic uh, megalomania, uh, Machiavellianism once they are given a title and they think that that's yeah. leadership. You know, I'm the boss. No, I hate people to use the term boss. I really do. I don't like it at all. Um, to me, boss connotates someone who's, well, de facto and bossy, which is, you know, a variation of the word boss. So, you know, it's just, I'm your boss. I mean, that's, that's quite a thing to say to somebody. I've tried to say that to my two Siberian Huskies and they just walk off and <laughs> be on the carpet. They're just like, we'll show you who's boss. Buddy. <laughs> Try telling your teenagers who's boss. Um, and so the, these are some really important aspects. Um, so in talking about leaders, how can leaders make more consistent decisions in the best interests of the company? And uh, yeah, let's do that one. And then I'm going to do another one. My direct experience has been in order, to, in order to make decisions, the best decisions in the, in the interest of the organization, there needs to be a mission statement, a very, very clear mission statement. And that's your North Star. Mm -hmm. That's your North Star. We, you know, we, we, you know, we, we strive to, uh, oh, I, you know, for, for me, Chris, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mission of my organization, even though I'm, I'm on my own and it's just me, Mm -hmm. To provide my clients with the latest uh, education, tools, and resources to make them uh, as effective as possible. And if I have a major decision to make, that's, that's what I need to turn to. That's what I need to think about in order to make the best decision. 
I, I had a uh, I had a, a discussion, quote unquote, years ago with an old boss, okay, mm -hmm. uh, at a at a pharmaceutical company, and you know the 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 mission statement of our organization of of our department to to be the number one provider of education and training for all employees within this organization. Mm -hmm. Department came to me and said, Ron, could you please help us with some etiquette training and this and that? This is in the pharmaceutical industry years ago when they could take doctors out to dinner and all this other stuff. And, you know, we had, we had some etiquette training. My boss said to me, no, you're not doing that. There are too many other important things we need to do. And I was like, Joe, on what are you basing this decision? Because as I see it, this is providing we are being the number one provider of education and training. And it is going to help this department to be more effective. Mm -hmm. He thought about it, and I give him a lot of credit. And he said, "You're right. You're right." Because <laughs> there, there, there needs to be a north star. And yeah. with, without that, I mean, I, I can give you another example. I, I was see. talking to, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine years ago, and he runs a for-profit uh, hospice facility, mm -hmm. and he was telling me. That, yeah, he goes, I've run into some trouble here. My marketing is not that good. I'm not sure what's going on here. And he was just kind of, you know, telling me what was going on. And I said to him, I was like, Dave, let me ask you something. What's the mission statement of your organization? Oh, we don't have one. Okay. On what do you base your decisions? When you have a big decision to make, on, on what do you base them? He goes, how things are at, you know, at that time from a revenue perspective. And I was like, okay, do you find yourself making inconsistent decisions? Oh, all the time. And I was like, yeah, no, no surprise. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> needs to it be that North Star. Needs to be the North Star. You know, the one thing, and I like how the story of how the CEO admit that he was wrong, you know, and 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 some people are have a really hard time doing that, especially if they're in technically power or they're in a position of authority. You know, being able to admit that they're wrong, but your 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 staff needs to see that. Oh. They they need to see that you're a good judge um, and jury, and that you can admit that you're wrong. You know, I learned a long time ago to you know start begging my employees for help and advice and tips and and uh, feedback because. I learned very quickly that I am not the, uh, I don't have the corner in the world on all the greatest ideas and right. thoughts and stuff. And, and uh, like we joked earlier, you know, sometimes I have, I, I don't do things right. Um, which is most of the time, actually people that know me, they're like, what the hell are you doing? But, uh, that's, that's why I'm talking to my psychiatrist about right. that right now. Um, and he, he says that most of the time during the session, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Why am I here? And uh, so there's that. But I, I, you know, so we asked our employees for feedback, input. Uh, I admit when I'm wrong. If an employee comes to me with, uh, hey, Chris, you know how you spent 500 hours building this whole system for this one part of the business throughput? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, hey, you know, you can do a little bit better here. I'm not like defensive about it. And like, ah, what do you know? You know, because I've had people do that. They, they'll walk into something and go, hey, you know, I could see some ways you can make this better and you're like really what ways because uh, i'd like to know because i'm always trying to figure you know businesses are a constant state of improvement there's never you know one thing i learned in business there's never like a point where you're just like okay we improved everything now we're done we can just okay. kind of ride this that's exactly right you ride this train out you know it's like as soon as you get stuff done it's like when you put out your first book they go okay so what's the next book about and you're like i just put out this one what do you want from me you know it's uh that's right. What's that, old uh, song? I mean, that, that, that goes to the difference, at least for me, between a mission statement and a vision statement for an organization. Mm -hmm. Because a vision statement should be unattainable. Because otherwise, if you reach it, it's like, where do we go from here? We're it's done. Not, it's not really a mission at that point, right? Exactly. You're like, we're done. Exactly. Plant the flag over, whatever. There you go. Hey, so let me ask you this. So one of the things you talk about is how leaders can work with people with different personality types. That was one of my biggest challenges in having hundreds of employees is, is understanding personality types. I mean, I didn't understand that becoming a CEO of large corporations, you basically had to become a psychologist. I didn't, I should have went to college for that, I guess. 
Uh, and you know, you have people that come in and, and I mean, I had to fix people's marriage problems. I mean, I didn't really fix them, but you know, you'd have to hear of them and they're like, you know, like, why, why are you having trouble at work today? And uh, I'm having divorce problems or marriage home problems. And I'm like, well, um, I don't know, just send all the kids to military school and everything will be fine. Okay. Now get back to work. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I probably did tell somebody to do that. Um, but uh, you, you end up being a psychologist. So how, how come leaders deal better with different personality types? I am a huge, huge, huge believer in the DISC personality assessment. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, yeah. To, to me, the best instrument on the market, number one, it's easy to, it's easy to understand. It's easy to use. And I mean, it's it, it's understandable, hmm. and just very very simply, it, it just it it gives you a blueprint of of how to deal with, talk with, communicate people who have different styles than you do, hmm. and it's just it's just so clear. I mean, the the dominant style in the in the disc results oriented and fast paced. So if you're a D, no matter what style I am. If I want to deal with you effectively, that's what I need to do. I need to come to you. Chris, this is what you asked me for. Here it is. If you have any questions, let me know, and then I leave. There you go. Because you're the D. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of that, if, I'm, if I am more of, of the I, the influencer, fast-paced, people-oriented, if that's your style, then when I come to you, I need to be a little bit more personable. I probably want to chat with you a little bit before we start. And again, uh, you know, people say, well, how long do you have to chat? Not long. <laughs> Not long. Again, just go back to the Don't humor. hurry yourself, people. Hey, hey, Chris, how was your show yesterday? How did it go? Well, well. Chris, yeah. What's going on? How are the dogs? They're doing good. They ate they they the couch. Too. Boom. And yeah. again, you know, there, are, there are the other styles there. I don't need to get in. I don't need to sure. go through all four. I can. The point is, again, it's easily understood. And I mean, I, I have had organizations, I, I actually did the keynote address uh, for a, a medical device company back in March, mm -hmm. and I took them through the disc. Mm -hmm. And just everybody was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. This has just opened up so many different, so many different eyes for me, because it's not only within your own organization. This is applicable to customers, vendors, your you know your wife, your husband, your mm -hmm. children, and I mean one of one of the one of the nicest compliments I've gotten over the years. Uh, I, I did a two day class for uh, uh, Santa Fe Aventus, the the big pharma. We finished up. Guy comes up to me and you know Ron, thank you so much. I got so much out of this. Oh, you know you're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it and so forth. And he leaned in. And I could tell he was going to say something quietly. He goes, it was something else, too. And I thought I knew where he was going with his comment. And I said, well, what was that, Randy? And he was like, Ron, it was two days of fabulous marriage counseling. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because everything we talk about here is applicable in your personal life as well. <laughs> there you go. You know, that's that's true. I think we all, you know, we. I think there's a bit of, personal a minor narcissism we all think that everyone is like us um and you know you have to realize you know like for me that not everyone's as cool as i am but uh wait what uh anyway i'm just kidding people uh disc um the model i'll lay a foundation for this so people have it and they can google it the disc model is a tool that classifies people's behavior into four types dominance influence steadiness and conscientiousness um I think there's a fifth one. It's called Disca, and it's asshole. And I think I'm the A. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My employees. Tell you a story about that too. <laughs> Please do. I, that sounds good. I was, well, and, and you know, actually, actually, it 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 is applicable. I I I I've been coaching this guy Matt, who is a uh, computer technician at the high school near us, mm -hmm. and I took him through the disc a number of years ago. And he absolutely just ate it up. He just ate it up. He goes, oh, this is fabulous. This is fabulous. I was talking to him a number of months ago. And he was like, oh, we've got a new IT director. And I can't figure him out, Ron. 
I don't know if he's a D or if he's if he's a C and he's going through it. He goes, he'll stab you in the back and then then he'll do this. And it's like, Matt, 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 time out, time out, buddy. There's no category on there. And I, I won't use the word I used <laughs> in public because there's no category for jerk. <laughs> yeah, there Some you go. Some people are just jerks. <laughs> Somebody called me a variation of jerk is the D, but uh, that's another story. Um, so there you go. You've been a big one. Uh, uh, that or I'm an arse, an asshole. Um, so these are really insightful, but people need to recognize this because you've got to figure out people's different personalities so that you can motivate them because everyone okay. has to be motivated differently. Am I wrong? Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. We are all so different. And you know, the, the beauty for me, Chris, of the disc instrument is that you can figure out very, very, very quickly someone's style. It's, it right. is as simple as is this person faster paced or slower paced? Mm -hmm. Once you've made that decision, then you take a look. Is this person exhibiting more task behavior or relationship behavior. Put it together and you have your style. Boom. There you go. It's so important to understand the basics of all this stuff um, and, and what it's about and where it's going, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you can't figure out people's personalities, their types, if you can't listen to people, if you can't motiv motivate them, um, you know, you're not going to accomplish much. You're just going to end up with a lot of people pushing paper around and, and uh, filling in the blanks and, and just phoning it in. And that can make a whole difference in your organization. If assuming you get anything done at all with that sort of thing. Um, what, uh, how do you, how do you keep people interested in their job? That's another question I had for you. How do you keep people constantly interested in their job, doing it well and performing it well? I think I think the, the key is, Chris, and again, let's let's go back to the word. It's coming up over and over. Communication mm -hmm. is that, you know, we, we need leaders and managers need to keep talking to their employees about what's going on with you. How, how happy are you here? How content are you in this job? What's what's you, what you know, what's making you unhappy? You know, what it, whatever it might be. Because things change, things change. You know, it's like all of a sudden, you know, so you know, someone has a baby at home. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking that out of the air, and all of a sudden, it's like I can't put all of these hours in anymore. I can't do it. Or so you know, someone's performance is starting to drop, and it's like, gee, I don't know. It's like, well, maybe it's because they've been in the same job for five years, and you haven't talked to them about. What else would you like to do? Maybe we can move you to a different department. What are your interests? I mean, it all goes back to, and again, what we've been talking about, getting to know each other and continuing that relationship. It's not a one and done. There you go. In, in building relationships are really kind of all what we've been talking about during the show, building healthy relationships with people, listening to them, understanding them. And the more we understand each other and, and even from a personal level, like you talked about the show, getting to know maybe what someone's personal interests are and how they operate, you know, uh, it's much easier to gain rapport that way too. Uh, you know, I used to have that with buyers and sellers when I wanted to sell somebody something, you know, I go to a buyer and, you know, you, you try and gain rapport with them first. Uh, I would see a picture of a, you know, a dog or something on the, oh, you're married. Uh, you, you got a dog there. Uh, here's a picture of your wife and kids, uh, nice kids. You know, you, you see all that sort of thing. And uh, then you can build rapport. And if you, you need to add that with coworkers so you can understand what they're about. And people who understand each other and have rapport with each other tend to do better with each other. I mean, otherwise, right. you're just looking at MMA uh, cage match fist fights over there in the corner next to the water cooler. Right. Yeah, That's right. That, those don't go well, but they're fun to watch. <laughs> um, so there you go. Ron, anything you want to tease out with us before we go? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think, yeah, again, I'll, I'll, I'll close with one of, the, one of the best things any leader can do, get to know yourself extraordinarily well. The mm -hmm. disc helps. You know, getting feedback from other people, just all of these things. The better you know yourself, the more effectively you will work with other people. Really true. I mean, I know I, I've seen people try and be leaders that have no clue who the hell they are. Uh, and they have no clue how their behavior operates or how they come across to people. 
okay. uh, whether they're demotivating or people, they just think that since someone gave them a title, they're just the uh, Lord of the Flies, and so they're just running around, <laughs> you know, operating in some sort of Lord of the Flies sort of leadership position. And they usually create environments that are like Lord of the Flies. I love that reference, and it doesn't it doesn't go on the end. It's kind of nice if somebody's paying your bill for that, but eventually someone's going to figure out that you're just you're not you're not a good leader and usually usually the sad part is is a lot of people leave the organization move on from the organization quit and i think there's a statistics out there like i'm just gonna fly this out i don't know if it's accurate so don't yell at me but like 95 percent of people or 85 percent of people i think leave a job because of poor leadership exactly they just don't like the management i could be wrong on the number but no no i chris i'm i'm not, I'm not sure of the percentage Mm -hmm. The number one reason people leave organizations mm -hmm. is their relationship with their boss. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go. Well, it makes all the difference in the world. This has been a great discussion, very insightful and stuff. Uh, how can people reach out to you, work with you, talk about working with you, and get to know you better? Chris, again, uh, probably the best thing to do is just to go to LinkedIn. Very mm -hmm. simply, Ron Reich, uh, mm -hmm. RLB Training and Development. And, you know, the, the real important thing that I'd like to get across to Chris, and it's what we've been talking about, and I mean it, is that if, if anybody wants to chat, I welcome the chance to do just that. Just chat. It's not going to be, oh, well, I can't share with you any resources unless we work together. Or, you know, this is what the cost will be. Hey, I'll be glad to talk to you. If we decide to work together, all the better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just welcome the chance to talk with somebody. There you go. Uh, and they can reach out to you on LinkedIn. There's some contact info, too, if people do that. RLB Training and Development as well. Uh, thanks, Ron, for being on the show. We really appreciate it and great deep dive into business. And hopefully everyone listens. And, and I love your idea of how leaders need to know themselves better because, you know, there's nothing worse than poor leadership. I've done enough of that in my life. Right. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks, Ron, for being here. We certainly appreciate Thank it. Thank you. My there pleasure. You go. And uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to the show. Go to goodreads.com for says Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com for says Chris Voss. Uh, subscribe to the big LinkedIn newsletter. This will be on that as well, coming out next week, probably at the pace we're going. And then uh, let's see, what else is there? YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that crazy stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. And that should have us out. Great show.